This is Jeremiah. Welcome back. We are ready to get into... Well, let's fix the camera just a bit. Pardon me. We're ready to get into some more Bible study with Jeremiah here at New Covenant. And we have a lot of work here set for me here in front of me. As is before my face. <laughs> There's Mark for you, chapter 1. So before my face, and we're on Matthew, let's get to look. Now we are going to breeze through this Bible. Uh, this summer I plan on taking a big chunk out of this uh, Bible here. So uh, now we're in, we're in a portion here, Mark chapter 1 and chapter 2, where it's impossible to really go through quickly. Uh, we, you, certain chapters in your Bible are... According to uh, uh, general Protestantism, you want to focus on the general basics of living bread. You, you, you want to focus on the things that are def definitely required. And, and that's what I focus on in this ministry. So, uh, most of the time. Healings uh, and, and these issues, we, I don't spend that much time on. And one reason we do we we do this is because James said go to the leaders and get healed. Uh, for you to look at uh, the various thirty plus or so odd healings and to find some sort of path to being healed, it's 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 good. It's good to do that, and and we're doing that now. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean that the old ways of being healed are worthless. <laughs> no, no, no. What it means is that we have a much more simpler protocol. In other words, you don't need thousands of books from the store. You know, I, I had a roommate who had a hundred books on healings and so forth. And, and of course, obviously he, he was, he was, uh, he was trying to uh, find some sort of path to guarantee having wellness and really James removes all of these books from the bookstore you don't really need any of them so let's get going and as far as the way the Lord healed in the past you really don't necessarily have to go that route you know there we, we leave everything op open to God, e even if we have a command to go to the elders and get healed. I I'm still not going to obviously say, don't do what was happened in the past. <laughs> no, no, no. What it means is that uh, that's where we start. Okay. Okay, your, your Bible starts with commandments, and that's what I focus on in this ministry and the teachings of those commandments. That's what we focus on here the most. And that's related to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before your God. Those are the basic three categories of your Bible. And we focus on those three categories so that we, we hammer home those ideas. To do what you're told to do in the commandments and learn about those commandments. To teach care for people and forgiveness and to be humble and to allow the Lord to humiliate you uh, whenever he sees fit to do so which is what he's commanded you essentially to do now we, we went to, through living bread here a little while back and I have some living bread videos up And it starts out with a lot of humiliation scriptures. That's what I started with here. Take up your cross. Put on the yoke. But there's more to living bread, or the bread that which, which came down from heaven in these red letters here. There's more to it than humiliation. Allowing yourself to be lowered. That's what it means. For you to find yourself in a very low status. Uh, on many levels, and, and, and in order for you to understand what living bread is, it, it, it doesn't end there, 
but it basically begins there because you, when you when you came to Jesus Christ with with the remission of sins through the confession of your sin and the confession of reality and seeing reality and agreeing with reality, you found yourself in a winning position. And your first step was humiliation. The master's first step was humiliation, and his second step was humiliation. Kneeling and, 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 and or rather, be allowing himself to be baptized, not kneeling, allowing himself to be baptized, then going through his first gulp of the drink that he has to drink. It's a cup. And the cup has a multitude of or many different episodes of difficulties pertaining to the work of Father's salvation choo-choo train here. The, the love team here. The, the, uh, bind up the broken-hearted people and give them the gospel and save their souls. And the first two things that, that the master had to do was allow himself to be lowered in the water as a sign that in a ritual that his life now is going to be buried in service and that his will, his glory in, in relationship to his human body, which is re related to us, is that's what you're going to have to do. That, that, that's a commitment, a lifelong commitment. And his first step was he was guided to the wilderness for 40 days of no food. And there you are having your first big chunk of living bread. And he's not resisting being led into the wilderness. He's not questioning being led into the wilderness. And he knows that it's going to be a, a, a very difficult time on many levels. But because souls are going to be saved, the joy of that is going to give him the, the, the foresight to continue with these episodes of being lowered. Remember, he's the son of God in heaven, equal to God. Who being equal with God, thought it not robbery. He didn't think it was robbery to allow himself to be lowered. That's why the Master uses ashamed as a term for people who are going to encounter this call to Protestant Christianity, and they're going to reject it. They're going to be ashamed and offended at the true gospel. Okay? And, and the people who do push away this living bread, which is based upon humiliation they're going to find themselves in trouble. Uh, especially on the Lord's day. Because humiliation is the key to salvation. The Master spends most of his time talking about being a humble person and to put your old self, your old pride, your old uh, rulership, you, you're going to have to abdicate. And that becomes a big issue at, at, as the cornerstone of all of Christianity. Now we add to that to love mercy and kindness, and we have a winner on our hand. Then if you add all righteousness and purity to that humility, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we have a winner on our hand. We have someone who is loving the Lord with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Okay. Now let's get to Mark 1. We're going to listen to Mark 1 and Mark 2, and then we're going to uh, move on. Because we're just listening to scriptures. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. I greet you in the only name given amongst men. We do everything in that name by word or deed. And so that's, that's really what's going on here is that is that we're going to bounce around at the beginning of a lot of books. 
Uh, we're already through 12 of Matthew, which is good. Um, Mark should be pretty easy. Um, the first couple of chapters are not easy uh, because we're dealing with a lot of basic concepts of Christianity. We're dealing with a lot of basic living bread. And whenever we go through basic living bread, it, it, it makes everything difficult in terms of organizing everything and making it simple and quick. It, it becomes a, um, what's the word, word, word I'm looking for? It's an arduous, um, daunting experience to try to put everything together quickly and snap, crap, a pop. It was never meant for you to do that and I'm not I'm not flying in the face of that it's just that I am giving you a lot of basics right away that's what I'm doing pertaining to living bread we're focusing on living bread here okay uh, we should always focus on living bread everything should be seen basically through living bread that goes for sound doctrine which is every subject in your Bible essentially is what we call basically sound doctrine that is, there are a lot of different principles or subjects in your Bible, or more specifically, in the testimony of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of subjects, science, but the, the, but the one that you're going to focus on the most is that which is we might call germane to living bread. And that's commandments and teachings on commandments. Whether or not you understand the earth is, is flat and you still think it spins 400 yards a second, or that's not necessarily the key issue. Whether or not you want to grow your hair long, which Paul says don't, you shouldn't grow your hair long, you men, or all these issues are not the big issues. They're, they're, they're issues, and we teach them here, but they're not the big ones. The big ones are repentance, baptism, and endure to the end and shall be saved. That's the big stuff. Which is what I focus on here the most. Okay? Let, let, let's get to Mark. We're going to listen to Mark chapters 1 and 2. Then I'm going to teach on these two chapters. And we're going to put them away for the year. As we go, start going through the New Testament. And uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me mention one more. One, once again. A lot of these chapters we're going to breeze through quickly. Uh, 1 and 2 you can't do. But there are a lot of chapters such as the parable chapter. I'm going to go through the parable chapters quickly. That's two times in your gospel, uh, well, not, not the entire chapter, but uh, it's going to take a lot of the bulk of what we're doing. And, of course, when we get to Luke, Luke is going to take a lot of time. Just forget about uh, having uh, a quick lesson on Luke. Luke is going to be a little difficult uh, to, to make it quick and move on because there's too much information pertaining to living bread, pertaining to things that you really need to focus on. And, and, and as I mentioned here uh, quite often, we're not here to uh, to marginalize or push important things to the side. It's just that when you deal with living bread, repentance, baptism, uh, um, deity observations such as John chapter 5 and, and John chapter 8, we have two clear references to the command of the Lord Jesus Christ to see him as I am. See, and, and this becomes a big issue also at Living Bread. So Living Bread, is, it's, 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 a, it's a broad subject. However, I'm going to spend a lot of time on Living Bread, and you'll notice that as we go through the Bible together, okay? Now, let, let's get to Mark right now. Listen to Mark chapter 1 and 2, and... Uh, and just relax and listen and focus on the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1. This. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before me. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair, and with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, 
the legend of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, who also were in the ship, mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants, and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded thee even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew, with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they fell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand, and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. He said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, shew thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places. Came to him from every quarter. Okay, let's go to chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. I was right there. there we go. Let's go right to it. Chapter 2. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, 
They let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees used to fast, and they come and say unto him, why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast, while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, have ye never read what David did when he had need, and was in hunger, he and they that were with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest, and did eat the shewbread, which is not lawful to eat but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Okay. Here's my commentary uh, coming up. Not right now. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to shut down. And we'll be, right, we'll be right back. Maranatha. We'll be right back with our second segment on Mark. And, of course, this is the uh, 2023 Matrix um, lessons we're working on. We're, we're, uh, as a matter of fact, I have 27 ready for you now. I will put those up sometime this week. And you can go through all of these categories, and you can start having your Bible study based upon categories or subjects that the Lord is leading you to get into. Uh, I just added some additional uh, 53a and 54a. Now, these are short lessons that are just quick and to the point, uh, that are obviously subtext to the 52. Okay, which means that you should know 52 is not that difficult to memorize. There are 52 cards in a deck. There's the Jack of Hearts and the, and the Jack of Spades. So, and, and, and that's all we're going to do here. It's not that difficult. And I'm very excited about this. But let, let's, let's shut down. I like 20-minute videos now. Let, let's shut down. I'll be right back.